All right, everybody. Good morning. Um, can everybody hear me out there? Yeah. Yep. All right. All right. Um, I'm going to hit record on this, so we'll have it for future reference. Um, all right. So a couple of the training opportunities that are coming up. We got an uh, energy auditor recertification on September 4th and 5th. And I think that one's full. Um, and also, um, we're doing a full BPI EA class on September 16th through the 19th. And that one's full also. So um, those are just a couple of the trains that are coming up. Um, next month, we'll have a, a technical meeting on October 1st, it looks like. so. Um, be aware of that and we'll Turner will be sending out some emails um, is there any does anybody have any trains or anything like that that they'd like to share with the group does anyone know when the next uh, let inspector recertification is um, I don't know the exact date but I know it's going to be around the first of the year is when they typically do it Okay, thank you. Uh, Turner said usually around February 20th. All right, thank you. So, could you, could you hear Turner when he said that? No, I didn't hear him. Oh, he said, he said they'll post the calendar around the end of November for next okay. year. And so they usually, and they usually only do the one inspector class right towards the first of the year so you want to you'll want to pay attention to that okay um, and as soon, as soon as we know we'll put it on on our training opportunities but okay sounds good thank you yep um, is there anything else training wise or any other business that anybody would like to bring up all right um, I wanted to take a minute and talk about um, the adoption of the state construction codes, the current codes that are adopted, just to make sure everybody's aware, aware of that. And then um, our main topic is going to be photo documentation. Um, we'll be talking about what's required and what best practices there are. And um, a couple, of, we'll go over a couple ways to organize and put context to your photos. So. That's that's the topic for today. Um, so I wanted to just quickly take a couple minutes and talk about the current codes that are that have been adopted. And this is effective July first, twenty nineteen. Um, and I'm not going to go through all the amendments and everything, but um, on this website you can find you can find the current codes. And I kind of just want to go through the main. The main book so like the 2018 edition of the international building code including appendix j um, was adopted um, it's still the the 2015 code of the international residential code um, is adopted and then the appendix q of the 2018 edition of the international residential code um, the 2018 edition of the International Plumbing Code, the 2018 edition of the International Mechanical Code, the 2018 edition of the International Fuel Gas Code, um, the, the 2017 edition of the National Electrical Code, um, and let's see the the residential provisions of the 2015 edition of the International Energy Conservation Code and um, the commercial provisions of the 2018 edition of the International Energy Conservation Code and then the 2018 edition of the International Existing Building Code. So um, I just wanted to bring 
bring that to everybody's attention to make sure you're taking the time to see what what codes are current and um, with the new year starting and everything. So um, does anybody have any questions on that? You can go to this. I went to Doppel and they had a link that brought me over to the uh, legislative website for the state of Utah is where I found this. So. All right, so we'll be in our, our training here. Um, so this is kind of what we're going to talk about. We're going to go over, um, in relation to photo documentation, we're going to talk about monitoring results, uh, what me and Turner found out in the field during our program 18 monitoring. Uh, we'll go over some examples of good photo documentation, some bad photo documentation, um, some with good context and bad context. Um, and then we'll kind of talk about the guidelines, best practices, and some tips on photo documentation. And then um, Burl from MAG is going to show you the app that he uses to organize his photos. I'm going to show you a way um, to also document them. And then Turner, Turner is going to show you another method. So give you guys some, some options on how to document your photos. Um, before we get started, though, I wanted to ask you guys a question. I want some feedback on this. Um, what are some of the difficulties or issues your agency has with photo documentation? Does anybody run into any problems or obstacles or issues with it? Not really. No? Okay, I just I just wanted to see if there's anything out there um, at the agencies that were with trying to um, document photos and stuff. If you guys are having any issues, so just so we can be aware and try to help address that. But, um, another question I'd like to ask is, um, how's your agency use photo documentation to improve? I think the best thing we do is uh, we go over with the field crew before they go out to the job so they kind of know what the auditors are looking at. Oh, nice. So you guys will kind of go through and review the auditor's photos and get, give the crew a, an upper hand on what they're, what they're going to be going to? Yeah, it sort of shows them where we find the air leaks and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you uh, incorporate those into your work orders too? Like if there's a specific, say, a specific hole that they want air sealed? Uh, yeah, somewhat. We don't put them on the work order like I know Jesse does, but, gotcha. maybe, uh, but that's why we go over it ahead of time. Gotcha. Okay. Is there any other ways you guys out there are using photo documentation to I don't know, make the process easier or bring people up to speed or anything like that that would help out the other agencies. All right. Well, if you, if at any time you guys think of something, let us, let us know. Um, so program year 18 monitoring results. Um, so there were, there were 14 different uh, issues that we identified across six of the seven agencies. So it, it was pretty across the board. Um, there were, and they, I kind of summed them up into four different categories of, of citations that we, we found. And, um, the first one was the incomplete set of photos. So this is where 
um, they may have had good photos with context, but they may not have had photos of the furnace or some of the appliances or something. They didn't have a complete set of photos. They were missing some, missing some photos. Um, other issues we found were missing or unreadable context. So there are photos where just had no context to it. And so we didn't know how it related to weatherization and then, or they had handwritten them and you couldn't really read what was, what they had written. So um, another issue that we found was just missing photos. The client file didn't have any photos in it at the audit or, or post photos or something like that. So, um, and then um, there were some where we just had photos that you couldn't tell what what it was a picture of. It was either like blurry or up too close or um, the photo just made no sense. So those are kind of some of the issues that we've seen with photos and that's um, based off our monitoring results. That's why we're holding this technical meeting. We felt like it was it was an area that we can all improve. So um, I want to pull up I'm going to pull up a few photos here, and these are these are most of them are from the audit, but um, these are sets of photos, and I want I'm going to kind of click through them, and I want you guys to tell me what's missing or what's good or bad with these photos. Um, so I need a little bit of interaction here. Um, so these photos, you got the exterior, um, would you guys say this is a good exterior photo of the home? Yeah. And if so, what, if so, what's, what's good about this photo as far as, as it relates to weatherization? You can see the whole front of the house. Yeah, yep. you can see from corner to corner on the house. Um, they're they're standing back far enough where you can get a good full view. Um, and then um, they also got some good context. Like with exterior walls, what's one of the main what's one of the main things as it relates to weatherization that we're concerned about? Um, the orientation, right? So you want some context to which way the house is facing. So they've got some good, they've got uh, some good context there. Um, as I go, as I go down, again, they've got from corner to corner, and they've labeled what, what way that the house is facing, what wall that is. Um, and they went, they went around all four sides of the all exterior walls of the of the home. Um, they're taking pictures of broken windows, of of venting. Just anything anything that could pertain to um, weatherization. We got some of the appliances. What? Um, so I'm going to kind of scroll through this one a little bit, a little bit quicker, and kind of tell me: Does anybody see what? So that's all the photos. Does anybody see what was missing in this set of photos? If this, if this was a complete set of audit photos, furnace or water heater. Say that again. Furnace or water heater. Yep, yep. There's no com pictures of the combustion appliances, right, that are going to be evaluated on the audit. Or that could, that pertain to weatherization. So, yeah, there's no pictures of the furnace, or water heater. Um, so, that's that's kind of the issues with this, with this set of photos. Um, let me pull up another, let me pull up another one here. Okay, so 
I'll just kind of scroll down and tell me what, what's the good and the bad with these photos. Is there anything that's standing out for you guys? The, the descriptions aren't real good and the pictures are kind of dark and dreary looking. Yeah, it's not as nice when the when the context is handwritten, right? If you can if you could type it it it's a little bit clearer. Um, probably a few of these photos seem like they're just up too close. Right, it's kind, of, it's kind of better if you can take stand back and take a photo and write in the context of what you're, what you're wanting the person to see, versus getting up super close. But where, to where like this this photo right here, where you can't really make out. I mean, from the photo next to you, you can kind of tell it's probably the door handle, but it's so blurry, it it's almost a useless photo. So same, same thing there. It looks like the same, same photo of the door door knobs. So Okay, tell me what's what's missing on these ones. No label. Yeah, it's missing some context. So you got a good like this this top one right here. You got a good picture of the front of the house. You can see daylight on both sides of the house, so it's from corner to corner. Um, but you don't know which way that house is facing, right? You want you'd want a little bit of some kind of orientation label there. Um, yeah. It's just missing some of the um, content. As I go through, let me know if there's something else that you guys that's missing in this set of photos. No water heater or furnace. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah, no uh, pictures of the the flues and the terminations and the appliances, combustion appliances, and so that makes that one an incomplete set of photos. Um, let me pull up another one here. All right. So tell me what's good and not good about these about these photos. No label. Yeah, yeah, there's no context and it's kinda it's kinda nice if you can actually turn the pictures, you know, so they're facing the right way if you can. Um, and the way, like, the tool that Burl is going to show you, and that I'll show you, it's it'll make it easy to 
actually turn the photo so they're facing facing the right ways and that that helps to identify what the picture's up to. Um, yeah, they're missing context here. Um, and without context, you I mean you can sometimes make out what they're looking at, but you want to we want to know how it relates to weatherization the picture. So so we don't just have a bunch of pictures of uh, stuff that's not important to us. So um, and a mobile a mobile home needs a lot of context added to them. So yeah, that's that's the issues with that that set of photos. Um, Okay, what's going on here? This one? No contact. Yep. Yep. You do have some good good exterior photos where you, you're seeing the whole wall of the house. Um, but yeah, there's no there's no context here. So, um, let's see. So on this one, pay attention to what, like, uh, these full page photos they'll take up a lot more room and um, yeah they, it becomes a pretty big document if you start doing full full page photos like this but um, what's what's going on at this one guys no context again yeah no context and um, let me finish scrolling through these and you can Tell me if there's anything else that you Let me make a little smaller for you. Okay, what else was missing in the, that set of photos? Furnace. Furnace. There's and no just, pictures of the inside. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Um, and this this job, they had an issue with the client inside the home, and it would have would have I think helped diffuse that uh, a little earlier on if if they had had some photos from the audit of the preconditions of the home on the inside. So yeah, that that was missing in that set. So you can kind of get an idea and a feel for um, some of these photos that we're as we're doing monitorings and we're going through, and um, why it's important to you know make sure you're getting a good full view and and that the picture makes sense when you're taking it. Make sure it's not blurry and stuff. So. Um, so I want to want to take some time and go over uh, some of the guidelines and best practices. And I've kind of broke it into three sections, audit, production, and QCI. And so we'll start with the audit um, section. And in the field guide, or in the guidelines, B94A, it says photo documentation of existing pertinent conditions at time of audit. So. Um, you want to get good documentation, both of the exterior and interior, um, at the time of the audit. 
because that'll kind of be a good baseline of where where that house was when when we uh, started weatherization. Um, and then 9.4c under photo documentation, um, it says photographs of pre-weatherization conditions of each dwelling should be taken. Photos should be organized and context should be included to describe the purpose of each photo as it pertains to weatherization. And so um, that just calls back to that. You need to make sure that each photo, you put the context of why why you took a photo of it, how it, how it relates to the audit and to, to the weatherization. So, um, and some of the, some of the main things that you're looking at on the audit, and this does not include, this is not, does not include a full array of what, what you're going to take a picture of, but this is kind of some of the, the main things that, that you need to have. Um, the exterior sides of the home from corner to corner, and we kind of talked about that in some of those photos. And if the if you're like too close to the house and you can't take one photo, you can't get back far enough to take one photo of the whole side of a home, you kind of need to take a sequence of photos that overlap each other. So when you look at it, you can see where the one photo end and the next photo kind of covers a little bit of that first photo. And then, you know, if you got to take two or three photos to get across the side of a house, um, but you need to have a picture of the full, the full walls on the exteriors of the home. Um, you want pictures of the windows and doors at the audit. Um, and also in the guidelines, it says if, if a replacement door has glass in it, a photo of the existing door must be included in the audit photos. So, but it, it's highly recommended that you take a picture of all all the exterior doors and windows and um, I would label like on a door photo I'd label the orientation so which wall it's facing on if it's on the north south east or west and then what the material you may want to add what the material is of that door or something might might be good context but um, any appliances that are going to be evaluated on on the audit um, you want pictures of them and uh, Turner, yeah, any, so any appliances that get evaluated on the audit, you want a picture of it. Um, all the flu systems for combustion appliances, including the termination, you should have a picture of all that. Um, ventilation systems like the bath fans, existing fans in their ventilation duct, you know, if they're just terminating into the attic, you may want a picture of it so you can show the crews where they're going and what they're doing. and. Uh, so you know, better idea of what you need to do to write up a work order for them. Um, pictures of your subspaces, your attic crawl space, those kinds of things. Um, and then also, auditors, as you're out there um, taking photos and stuff, be thinking about if you were going to add photos to your work orders, like if you if you have a if you found a specific hole that you needed the crews to air seal, it'd be a good idea to have a good picture that you could put into context for them, so they know right where to go and what to do. So um, you can use photos to your advantage that way to help help you with your work orders and and uh, guiding guiding the work, I guess. So, um, Turner, do you have anything you'd like to add on the auditor? No, I, I just feel like this, this stuff really pertains a lot to the auditors because when you when you look at production photos, they're a little more specific. Like if you're doing something in production, you just you just installed it, now you're photographing it. If you're doing something with a QCI, you have a you have kind of a detailed list of things that you're checking off. But the auditors are the ones that really have to remember, like, I need to photograph all these things and so Anything you can do to kind of standardize the order that you do them in so that, you know, that will help you just, just your practice will help you to remember to, to get thorough documentation. Uh, I like to, when I go to a house, the first thing I do is I, I actually take a photo of the client's name on something, whether this written on a piece of paper or if I take a screenshot or something, 
and then I take all my exterior photos. Uh, I think one of the things that I've forgotten and I don't do a very good job of is I need to take pictures of the, the exterior terminations when I'm doing that. But uh, anyway, I take all my exterior photos, then I go in and I do kind of a health and safety walk through the house, and then I get my camera out, and then I go through and I photograph everything uh, inside the house, and and starting with the HVAC, and then the water heater, and any gas stoves, and then, you know, any exhaust fans, but find a system that works for you and work it into, work it into your process so that you're following the same order of things and you'll end up with a, mo a lot more comprehensive photos. Yeah, and another thing I would add is just, you know, any unusual conditions like if if you notice a leak inside the house somewhere where water's leaking leaking in, you know, document that stuff so you have uh, kind of a reference back to it if the client, if things start to evolve with the client. So, um, you kind of want to get a picture of everything that's unusual too that that could become a potential issue. Um, do you guys have questions on audit photo documentation? Okay, so production. Um, if you're doing any lead safe work, it is required that you photo the site and the containment setup. Um, so be aware of that. Um, and that's in E715 of the, of the guidelines. Um, and then another, another thing that you should be doing during production, and it's not necessarily the production crews that have to do this, but if somebody um, at your agency would take photos of measures that are difficult to inspect at the final, like such as attic air sealing, if you're going to do some attic air sealing and then you're going to end up insulating over that, um, it's a good idea to get some pictures of the of the attic air sealing measure being done. Um, and also another one could be duct sealing if you're going to bury the duct in some insulation or something and you did some duct sealing. Um, it's a good idea to get some photos of that. Uh, any any kind of thing like any kind of measure like that that can be difficult or would be destructive for the the QCI to photo document after the fact. Um, yeah, it's a it's a best practice that you have your have somebody take photos during production. So. Um, that's that's basically it on production. They're not taking a ton of photos. Uh, do you guys have any questions on on that? Do you want us to just include those photos with the QCI photos? Like, yeah. Let's like say for. Yeah, you can. Um, yeah, I'd be fine with it with the QCI photos. So. And you can even have your QCI go out and take them if it's easier, you know, for, I don't know, every agency is different on who has access to a camera and different stuff. So, um, you know, it probably would be easiest if the um, production crews could just take take the photos, snap some photos real quick, but um, however you work that out. And yes, it would be, it, that would be fine to include them in with the QCI photos, so. All right, so QCI stuff. So um, QCIs should be taking pictures of um, measures and uh, materials installed that were installed during weatherization. Um, and also take uh, photos of any issues identified. So if they go out there and they find a callback or or something that they're going to send the crews back out to. Um, it's a good idea just for even a training tool to have some good photos that they can show the crews. Hey, this is what this is what was wrong. This is the issue out of the job, and they can do a little bit of a training before they even send them back out and possibly include it on the on the uh, 
work order to go back out and fix it. So, um, so it's a good idea. I mean, they create, it's a powerful tool to have a photograph of something to explain it. It um, can be really useful. Um, and also, as a QCI, I would document any changes. Like, say, they, the homeowner started remodeling during the middle of weatherization. You know, take some pictures of that if it's going to affect your your final blower door and and stuff. You know, um, if anything crazy like that, any kind of changes like that, I would I would document them with a little with a few photos. So, um, and then um, follow up work. Make sure make sure you get photos of after you've had some callback work. They go out there and fix it. Um, get some photos of of the the rework. So, um, do you guys have any questions on what photos QCI should be taking, or any questions about that? All right. So I'm not. I'm not a photographer or anything, but um, I, I try to just come up with a few tips that could help you guys. We kind of hit on a couple of these, but um, doing your taking your photos in the same sequence at each shop could probably help. Like Turner said, kind of has a, a method that he that a kind of a flow that he goes through when he's taking his pictures of the, the exterior, and then he goes on the inside and stuff. Um, come up with a good standardized method for taking your photos will probably help. Um, and then um, Turner says he he likes to also stand back and take a picture of an appliance from a little bit of a distance just so you can see what it is and what appliance you're looking at and then he'll take a pictures closer up if needed. Um, also Also, if you um, sometimes shooting from like the wayside, if you're trying to take a picture of a room or something like that, it can help not holding your camera up, up so high, but putting it lower. Um, that's how like realtors and stuff will take pictures of houses and stuff. Just <clears throat> it can give you a little better view, a fuller view of the of the room um, that you're trying to take a picture of. Um, an example of of kind of standing back first is like this. Like I took this picture out in the training house where I stood back and I could see the the bathroom fan up there on the ceiling and I kind of got a a full view of that room. And then I my next picture is of of me doing a testing the the bath fan. So it kind of helps put it into context too if you and especially, not necessarily that this picture, this full view picture of the bathroom is going to be really useful, but um, if I was taking my pictures in sequence, when I go back to put the, my photos on a document, it'll help me remember what, what bathroom that um, photo was in if I, didn't, if I didn't put context to it while I was out on the job. So um, be aware of that kind of stuff. Also, some other things is making sure that you're – Photos are not blurry. We see a ton of blurry photos. So just when you're holding up your camera or whatever, make sure you, you're looking at it and actually seeing what you're taking a picture of. And if it's, you know, if you're getting a clear clear shot, and um, I would say always standing back a little bit farther is better. And you can just add in context. But um, does anybody out there have any other tips for taking photos that might be more experienced than me at this? Some of you auditors take a lot of photos. Do you guys have any tips? I know that on the iPhone, if you're taking a photo, you can tap on the screen and then it will show a little bar and you can adjust the brightness on where it's focusing. So if you're out in the sun, you can dip down so you can see the house blurred out by the light of the sun. Oh, nice. Okay. So that's a good, that's a good tip if you got an iPhone. Uh, does anybody else have any other tips from that they've kind of learned or little tricks that they do when they're out taking photos to help them? Sometimes, 
sometimes the uh, panoramas work good too if you can't get the whole house in one picture or basement or whatever you can panorama it and get it all in one shot oh nice that's a good tip is anybody else Could you guys hear that question from Turner? No. He he asked the um, does anybody know how to do a panorama on the Android phone? Yeah, you just select the panorama setting. You just select the panorama setting. <laughs> All right, thanks for that. Turner said thanks. So. Well, I just know on the Samsung, like it's on the bottom, you just slide through your different settings, and then Panorama is just one of them. So I don't know what phone you're using, but that's on the S10. Thank you. He said he just found it, so must be the, the same phone. <clears throat> All right. Um, So now I'm going to turn the time over to Burl, um, if he wouldn't mind. He's going to explain this um, photo app that he uses. I think Turner had him get on on a technical meeting one time before, but thought it'd be good just to go back through it. And um, so yeah, I'll let I'll let Burl take the reins for just a minute, and I'll I can just change the screen when you need me to, Burl. Okay, sounds good. Um, this is just a basic overview. I don't know if it's an Android application, but we use it on our iPad. It's called PDF Photos. I think you get a free trial for about a month. Do you recall what it was, Matt? It's not. It's something like that. Yeah, it's around. It's around there. So this is just kind of how I use it. This is the middle photo here. It's just a picture of the cover page that. I try to do on my audit photos. Um, just have the our company logo on the top, and then just fill in some client information here in the blue section, and then um, the street view of the front of the home on the cover page. And then on the right here is just kind of what it would look like when you go through and label your photos. Um, you can pick different ones. This is just the one that I use, and I'll kind of sh show you how I get this set up here on the right. If you go to the next slide. So when you first open the app, it'll have you pick um, the layout that you want. Um, you have like your basic layouts. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I can still walk through it. Um, you have your basic layouts here. And then if you click next map, you have your custom layouts here. And you can create however many you want in this photo in this section here, but I'm not sure on the custom layouts that you can add labels. So I I use these advanced layouts over here on the right. If you click again, this is the one that I use here. It's a four by four, so it has um, four photos on the left, and then um, you can write your text off to the right. But as you can see, there's a bunch of different examples for however you want to lay out your photos. And then once you've completed this step, you'll just hit the next button here. Then I don't do much with this page. Um, this whole side on the right, I kind of left um, how it comes default. Um, on the left side here, you have the cover page, which if you click, you'll see. If you, yeah, this is the one that I use that I showed that example of. Oops. This cover page is the one that I use up the arrows to here on the left. And it'll I'll show you how that kind of looks and kind of how to set it up. And then um, if you want a page header, you can add that as well. And you can mess with these different options and kind of go in and out of one to see which one you like best. So then the next step here is that we'll just sit here to add your photos. So we'll just hit this add photos button. 
And then what I do is um, I take the photos on my iPhone and then I just airdrop them to my iPad. And then I'll go create an album for the client and I'll just, if you can see in the bottom left here, or if you click real quick, Mac. Right here, I'll, I'll create an album with the client name or however you want to label the file. That way it's just easier to find later. And if you click one more time, um, you can select individual photos by just clicking on them. Or if you want to just select them all, you just hold down and drag over the top of all the photos. And then this is kind of how I get that, um, this cover page here. This is what it looks like when you kind of set it up. It'll, like I said in the beginning, you have your company logo. And then this is what it'll look like after you finish your cover page. Um, this is if you hit this, the pages button in the bottom left, it looks like this is what the photo on the left looks like. So you can have kind of an overview of all the photos. If you want to look or you can, oh. And then on the photo here on the right is just um, what it kind of looks like when you're editing it. So you'll set your photo on the left and then you can click in this box where all this text is and then you can write a good amount of text there. And then the arrow on the left here just shows the file name so you can name it whatever you'd like. Um, I can't remember the issue we had with these quick ones. Um, in the right where you have like Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive. Um, Shadow found the best way to do it is to hit this send to, and then it'll start to uh, convert the photos. And then from here, you can select your Google Drive or email them or however you want to show your photos. And that's basically it. All right, does anybody have any questions for Burl? Pearl, did you say how much the app was? How much it cost? Uh, I can't remember. I know there's a monthly fee, or you can do a year, or you can do a lifetime. And I can't remember the cost, and I tried to look this morning, but it doesn't show me since I've already purchased it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think it was too much. I think yearly it was like 27 and then I think lifetime was like another 10 bucks or something like that. Oh, got yeah. I and it's an app purchase, so if you you have if you have multiple iPads or whatever tablet you're using, you have to purchase it on each device because it's an in-app purchase. So oh, okay. Something. So it won't go across all your devices. No, unfortunately not. I think when we've done it, it was like 26 or 27 for a lifetime. I don't know if that's changed since, but that was probably four months ago when we bought it. Okay. And the, the issue with if you just hit, so if you have like your client files on Google Drive, if, on this screen, if you just hit Google Drive, it won't let you like actually go into the client file. It'll just save it to my drive. But if you hit send to and then go to Google Drive, it'll actually let you go into the client file and save it where you want. Okay. Good, good to know. All right, so I wanted to uh, take a couple minutes and go through um, just a basic. Um, I'm just going to show you how you can use PDF Expert for photo documentation. Are there a lot of you guys out there that use PDF Expert? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. What's that? In anyways, um, it's a good it's a good app um, that you can download. Um, and I what I did is I just went into Adobe and I created a basic Adobe uh, PDF, and I made just a couple fillable forms. So like the client's name, I can just type that in and the job number, and then I made a drop down box for what stage of the photos like is this during auto production QCI. And so I just basically made a blank sheet. And I, um, with the Adobe that I have, I'm, I'm not able to make the document populate new pages as I use up 
a page. I don't have like the Adobe lifecycle or whatever. So I had to make this document with like 10 pages so I can put, you know, 40 photos on it. But um, so I want to kind of show you how, how you add photos to a PDF document in PDF expert. Um, so this is the, this is a screenshot of my iPhone. Um, and so this is the document opened up in PDF expert. And if you just hold down on the screen, it'll bring up, it'll bring up this tab bar here and you hit the arrow over, um, and you click on image and it'll take you to this screen on your phone or, or iPad. And you can either choose to use the camera or you can just select from your photo album. So if you've already went around the house and um, taken all the pictures and you're just back at the office, you select out of your photo album, or if you're actually doing this on site, you can just select the camera and take a picture. Um, and then if that picture will pop up on your, on your document. And when it's got this box around it, you can move that photo wherever you want on the page. And I found it seems like four photos seem to be the right amount of photos per page um, where you're not, if you start doing half page photos, they get the document gets too big and the photos are just too much where if you do four, you can usually see, see the photo good enough and um, it just seems to be the right, the right size. So you move that, you move that picture wherever you need it on the document. Um, and then to add some context to the photo, you just click the text box up there at the top and you can tap on, you can tap on the photo and type on the photo. You can type below it to the side of it, wherever you want to add text. Um, and another option I like to use is I just hit the, the little microphone down here. I can do voice to text. So it don't take me long. Like I can throw the picture on there, tap on it, do voice to text and add in whatever context I want really quick and then hit done. Um, and then I just start placing the photos next to um, next to each other. Um, and so this is kind of what like a finished document. It's not as it's not as pretty as Burl's app, um, the PDF Photos app is, but um, it's a free free option um, and it work, works fairly good. And then you can email it. Um, another piece of advice I'd give you before you even started adding photos or any like the client's name or anything to the document, go to save as first, get this button up here and select save a copy and, and save a copy under the client's name and then open that copy and start adding your photos because then you'll, and then I'll leave, you always keep your blank photo document for the next job. So. Um, but then, yeah, you can email yourself and it'll ask you if you want to flatten, flatten the copy or, or whatnot. So, um, do you guys have any questions on that? Is anybody out there using this kind of this method with PDF expert? And if so, does it work good in the field? Okay, um, it's, just, it's just an option. Um, I could even I could email you guys the this blank form if you wanted it. Um, if you guys decide to do your photos this way, but um, so that's all I have for you. Turner's got um, he's going to show you the way that he's used to document photos. And I think he showed this once before, but it'll be a good reminder. And then um, that will wrap up this technical meeting. So let me. Let me turn my screen over to to Turner here. All right. All right. You may have to mute yourself over there and help. Okay, so uh, I think a lot of you have seen this already, but 
basically I just came across a little add-in that's like a Microsoft Word add-in and what it does is if you open up Microsoft Word you go to your insert uh, portion of the ribbon it adds this this photo gallery into the, your ribbon and the photo gallery itself it's just you know a little piece of code somebody wrote and it is just designed to insert photos in a specific spot wherever your cursor is so I, as I've been out in the field I've seen a lot of you guys using it um, for those of you who have not seen it or don't have it this is where you can find it so it's at gregmaxi.com and there's the whole URL right there and just be aware this is a, this is an add-in that you're downloading off of the World Wide Web so there are some security issues that that could come with that so make sure you're running this through your IT department if you're using it um, but basically if you go to that website your IT department is comfortable with you using it then uh, there's a little bit of uh, spammy ads and stuff uh, you know where they, it looks like you're supposed to click there but you actually scroll all the way to the bottom he, he's given some good detailed instructions uh, you can donate to him if you want to but you don't have to but right here almost at the very bottom that's the link to download so if you download it it's gonna give you a zipped file you have to unzip the file and then once you unzip the file there's going to be an executable file a .exe file so if you unzip it and then you open up the unzipped file inside of that you'll just double click on the exe file it will run if your if microsoft word is open when you run that it'll tell you to close microsoft word but basically after you run it the next time you open up microsoft word then this will appear in your ribbon um, and then all it does, it just, in, it just basically imports the photos wherever your cursor is. So what I've done is I've created a form for myself. And this is the form. It just says photos. Or uh, I've had it at times, I'll have it say audit photos. But basically, it's, I found I use it best when it just says photos and then I can I can fill out these fields. So I put in the client's name, I put in the date, I put in my name, and then I put in this this last one, the stage, is really, really important. Uh, I notice on Burroughs, on his title sheet, uh, it just says weatherization and photos, but on the very first page, on the second page, his is actually labeled as audit photos. Uh, I cannot tell you how many times I get into a file where the audit photos got put in right next to the QCI photos and there's no date on anything. And to be able to figure out which one were the audit photos and which one were the QCI photos becomes kind of difficult. Uh, hopefully there's enough change or you can recognize some of the stuff that happened during weatherization to start to decipher that. But basically, best practice you should be putting your photos into a report and your report should list the stage that the photos were taken so here i would put in for this example i'm going to show you some photos that i took during a state qci so i would list that as the stage and then i just simply put my cursor where i want to input the photos i click on the gallery control panel and the first time you come in here, you're going to want to click on the configuration tab. I recommend that you go two across on the number of photos. If you go any more than that, they get a little too small. I recommend that you put a border on there. So I just put a one point border. And um, I think I've left all of this at the default, but on the caption stuff, I think it by default includes the file name. But all my file names are just like, they're gobbledygook. They're just a bunch of numbers that don't mean anything. So I like to turn that off. I like to turn on the sequentially numbered images. And then you can actually include a separator or a delimiter. And I like to put like a space. So what that's going to do is it's going to label picture number one, or the first picture as picture number one. And then there'll be a space right after it. So that when I 
click on the caption, then I'm ready to type. So that's how I like to configure it. And then once you've done your configuration, it saves it. So next time it should be configured that way. But uh, when you first come into here, it's going to have the source list from the last time you used it. So I just kind of remember like to ignore what's there for the first time. But I'll come in here and I'll just navigate to my file, the source file that I'm after. So in this case, I think I've got it under our better photos. So I just have this file called example client photos. So I'm going to click on that and I hit OK. And it's going to pull every photo out of that folder into this source list. And then I can either add them individually or I can add them all or I can remove some of them. So if I wanted to, you know, just move one photo at a time, I could. Uh, but typically I like to have all of my photos in that one folder. So I just click add all. And then I'm going to click on create photo gallery. Gives you a little warning that this might take a minute depending on the speed of your processor and the number of photos you have. Uh, it'll take a few minutes. But as you can see, while it's doing this, I'll see if I can scroll down a little bit, it's just pulling in, it basically creates a table, and in the first row of the table, it puts two photos. The second row ends up being these captions, and then the third row would be the next two photos, and then captions underneath. So works pretty good. Um, the one thing I've noticed with this one, though, is it, it used to get the orientation of the photos right and now I'm noticing that it will lay the photos in sideways just because they fit better and I don't know if there's a fix for that I'll scroll down here it's moving slowly because it's still processing but like this door it's in my file of folders I have oriented that properly same thing with this uh, backer rack or not backer rack but e instrument test um, it's laying it in there sideways. So I'm, I'm finding I actually have to go straighten the photos out. If anybody knows a fix for that, that would be awesome. Uh, but anyway, basically it allows you to, you know, just quickly get into uh, create uh, a report with all the photos in it. And then Let's give it just another minute to finish up. But once it's done, then you can click into the fields below and add your context or your caption. And then the other thing that I feel like is really important, I don't know if any of you have had your IT department complain about the amount of photos that you're saving on shared drives or anything like that, but after you've created this file as a Word document, if you'll convert it into a PDF, then it will turn it into a file that is a lot smaller than your Word document and way smaller than all 31 photos that I just made. So, okay, it's finally done. And yeah, if I click in here, you can see it's put the number one in there and there's a space. So I can just type in here the client's name. And I, you know, erase this for the sake of our video, but I literally take a screenshot of the client's name and then I start taking pictures of the house. At one, one time I had nothing to write on. I literally wrote the client's name in the snow and took a picture of it. It just helps me to keep my, my photos organized. But this would, could be, uh, I think this was the north, so front. Gosh. And so you go through all of them. Um, just, it's really, I recommend that you get into the practice of adding captions to most of your photos. Uh, you're going to, if you'll do that, you will go through and you'll find those photos like this one was a great example of, if I can get it to turn. This was a great example of a photo where I would probably need to add context to that. Does anybody have any idea what I took a picture of there? The dryer vent being too close to something? Yeah. Yeah, so 
this is actually a uh, carport. carport, like a little something they bought at Walmart or Costco or something. So this little carport thing that they set up right next to the dryer van. So anyway, that kind of stuff is really valuable if you can label that and help people to understand what in the world you took the photo of. So, but yeah, when you're all done, if you will print it or turn it into a PDF, then oops, that PDF is going to be a nice small file. And if your IT department has issues with the number of photos you're saving, then you can get in the habit of deleting your original photos. It's OK to delete your original photos. If your report is creating clear images of what you uh, saw at the house, then go ahead and delete your original photos. If you're not comfortable with that, then put them all in a folder and delete them every six months or something like that. So, anyway, that's just, that's just another tool that may help you guys out. So, that's all I had help. You guys got any questions on that? Hey, Matt, I was going to add something. So uh, we've been using this gallery thing for, I don't know, five or so years. And uh, I noticed with the, if you're making portfolios with Acrobat DC Pro, um, you can actually keep the Word documents in there and don't need to convert them to PDF. So you can always go back in later and still edit them in the same format and everything. And it works a little better than having it in a PDF. That makes sense. So. Um, you guys know what he's talking about. Basically, in Acrobat Pro, you can combine um, you can combine a bunch of uh, PDFs either into one PDF or you can create them into like a uh, portfolio. And in the portfolio, you can include Microsoft Office formats and other formats that it'll just, you know, if it's an Excel file, it'll leave it in the Excel format, but it's wrapped into that portfolio. So thanks for that, Jesse. Anything else? All right, um, so I'll have a couple of people that wanted um, that PDF document or that Adobe document that I created sent to them. So I'll just have Turner include that on the, the email as an attachment. Um, is there anything else anybody would like to bring up before we end the meeting? Okay. Uh, includes this technical meeting. Thanks.